And it's later than we should have. I've been Is saying that. Off? I said that last hour. That Welcome we, back. We sound like we He's started squeezing later. us. He's squeezing us on this. Welcome back to hour number two. This is Tampa Home Talk, and we've got a slew of guests lined up for yes, you this morning. So do. let's finish with your little insurance thing because we've got to get you okay. out the door. Yeah, what so I'm going to get out the door. So what I was saying is, is the way they're doing it with these roofs now. Well, the unfortunate thing is, is you might have somebody that has a, a house that was built in 2010, right? Almost, almost just past the sweet spot that that Leo looks at for buying a house. And they probably couldn't find very many competitive options at this point if they were trying to look for insurance. So think about you have. Was a that what you going to say, or was it something else? No, that was, was it. it. That's where we were going with that. But I mean, think about this for you as a listing agent, right? So you have a 2010 home. <laughs> Your roof's 10 years old. Guess what? You got to replace it. Uh, I, well, you. Well, that's the other side. You don't have to replace it. It's just your options are becoming limited on the carrier side. Well, the buyer is going to have like insurance shock, right? Maybe. Well, and that's that's where you're gonna. That's where the problem's gonna lie, and that's probably the bubble that'll burst the real estate thing. Is at some point we'll slow it down. Yeah. They won't be able to find insurance for the house. So is that effective now, or are you saying that's coming? But you can get citizens, the people's insurance. You can get oh. the people's insurance. I've been writing a lot of that. That's the already in place. That's, for that's citizens. That's <laughs> you got it. That's it. Or what I've seen a little bit of, and this is just more because I've had a lot of interesting cases across my desk. Going ENS, which is excess and surplus lines. Um, what does that mean? Lloyd's of London. London. Oh, the specialty insurance? Yeah. It's like where we have to go for Leo's commercial insurance. Is that any good? Like, is it better than Citizens? It's got to be. It's fancier sounding. It. <laughs> <laughs> the it's different. Citizens isn't that bad. I don't know why people. When, are bad when I citizens. hear Lords, Lord, Lord, Lords, Lords of, of London, I think about like insuring your pinky or something. Anyone that's been go. on the claim side of Citizens and all the extra hoops you have to go Listen, through to use I, your policy knows why know, Citizens is bad. All yeah. I know is I had Citizens at one point because I had State Farm years ago. Mm -hmm. They canceled me when they were kind of pulling out of Florida, and then we had a hailstorm that came through, and I had very clear golf ball size, oh, perfect yeah. round circles in the top of my screen lanai. And they would not pay it. It was very clear it was hail, hail mm -hmm. that not only ruined my screen but my pool, and they just wouldn't pay it. Yeah. I didn't know Aaron back then, so I just paid yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it was, it the other side of it was state farm. It was citizens. Yeah. So I just well didn't do anything. The other side of it is okay. Let's say you go ENS. Well, you better read that real thick hundred-page document they send you if it's if it's Lloyd's of London. What's in it's, there? Oh, if it's Lloyd's of London, it's filled <laughs> with uh, exclusions. Yes. Oh, got it. So, like, they probably have a very specific, if Katrina's house gets hail damage between the months of May and June, it's not going to be covered. But if it's on October, we may do it. If really? it's November. Really? that's where no, the I'm hail would come in. No, they'll, they'll, they'll literally do it. <laughs> if, there's thunder, if it's a thunderstorm that has hail, we'll exclude the hail. Oh, mm -hmm. that's weird. Yeah, they get goofy. So... But it'll sound more regal. Yes. So text good luck to 813 377 2775. I would love to write your policy. I, I do. I'm still writing a ton of them. It's just options are limited. So we have 20 carriers. And I think we should be able to pull some 20 money. 20 used to be 27. Well, we got like 60 overall, but for homeowners. Yeah. We should pull some money, keep the rules simple. Cap what the amount the payout is unless it's a total loss. And I I agree. You know what? I'm gonna do speaking of sense. that. I'm gonna leave the people that have money to pool, and uh, <laughs> we'll get back to writing these policies. Hope you guys have a great day. Appreciate you too. It. You too. We uh, are yes, going to miss you as always. Make but a difference out there. And we'll, uh, we'll have you back save next lives. week, Adam. Yeah. See you guys next week. So right. Pat Largo joined us. What was it last year or the year before for Small Business uh, Saturday? I can't no, remember. November 2019. So it's been almost two yeah, years, about a year and a half. Didn't count. Wow. So 2019, we had you. You were one of our great little guests that came in for Small Business Saturday. And uh, let's talk a little bit about local shops. So what? Are, what's your deal? What are you doing these days? Well, I'm doing my thing. I'm, I'm still a, a spokesperson for Local Shops 1 and Esther Venuzio. I'm doing my stand-up comedy with Comedians Uncorked and stuff like that, which is great. I mean, last year kind of canceled. I mean, everyone hurt last year. Yeah. So, it's so great Comedians Uncorked, what is that? What are you doing? Well, I uh, when I'm not getting booked at, at comedy clubs in, in Florida and the southeast part of the country, I started in 2018. Um, 
when I was kind of out of work after a car crash, and I said, let's, um, I got to do something. This might be a little sign from above. So I started this thing where I just booked, I did everything backwards. I had mm-hmm. no name, no banner, no nothing. And I, st- I had all the comedians. And um, so I booked, uh, I booked headlining comics in Florida just to give them an extra stage to perform on. Mm-hmm. Then I, we came up with the name Comedians on Court, got the whole nine yards. So now as I've been doing that for three years. Just so uh, is this like an indoor, outdoor <laughs> venue, a hodgepodge of all kinds of comedians? Or? Yes. Okay. As, yeah, it, it, uh, we do indoor, a lot of indoor, some outdoor, but I mean um, just basically tri-county area, Hillsborough, Pasco, and Pinellas right now. So I'm blessed to have some great venues that want to do stand-up comedy and um, all kinds of comics. But like I said, basically they're all headliners all throughout Florida. And I invite them to come in and, and book them and just give them another stage to perform on and get some new fans in our Tampa Bay area. Are you guys back up and running? Like, I imagine COVID kind of stopped everything for you, right? It, not as bad as my friends in New York you and know, LA You, you guys should have done, like, a Zoom comedy hour well, where you could pay and, like, come in and join. and Or even, like, one where they, you know what would, you know what would sell, Pat? What? I have an idea. Okay. You, so, totally do one where, you know how they say, don't heckle the comedian, don't heckle the comedian? Mm-hmm. You should have one where it's, like, a Zoom and you can heckle the comedian. Oh, Okay. That's called life for me. Don't I you know. think it would tell? Yeah. That's, uh, no. Uh, that what? Well, a lot of comics I know did virtuals. In fact, they still do do some virtual because it was a little lucrative, or at least it kept them going, you know, through last year. But I've never done the virtual thing, but a lot of good friends of mine have, which is a really cool thing. I mean, it really is neat to do that. Uh, and to keep your chops up, you know. Yeah. But I mean, um, yeah. Right. So now you got to tell us a joke. Uh, wait, before, wait before he yeah. tells the joke. When are you going to bring Sebastian Maniscalco to the Bay Area? Uh, he doesn't take my calls anymore. Uh-oh. No, I don't know. No, Sebastian. Did you heckle the comedian, Pat? No, Sebastian's great. Uh, I, I never worked with yeah, Sebastian. He is very funny. Very funny. I, I saw Brian Regan a week ago today at the Mahaffey. Oh, that was yeah, fun. That was good yeah. to see. It was great. He came out, and the way he's supposed to do it, he goes, I'm going to do some uh, new jokes. They're probably going to bomb. I'm going to stay away from some old jokes. And it relaxed everybody, and we had a great time. And just to see him with his new gray hair now, his his, his real gray hair on stage. You know, I was so. looking for a client event that would have been so much fun that we could have done virtually. I don't know why mm-hmm. I didn't think about doing, like, a comedy Zoom. Well, if you ever want to do an in-person comedy thing, we'll, we'll, we'll hook that up, to, you know, for, I mean, I got... We can always do stuff like that, too. So we, I may have to yeah. take you off on that. Get you a great group rate. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, I'm so bl- I'm happy now that friends of mine, like in, in Hollywood and, 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 and L.A., some of their clubs are, right now are, are opening, knock on wood, and people in New York and stuff, some of my friends up there are performing again. So I felt so bad for them because they were shut out last yeah. year. So, uh, but then we got local shops going on, and uh, thanks for having me on again for this. Talk so about I, the lo- local I stuff. love that you're still supporting the local shops yeah. and like trying to promote them. Uh, w- talk a little bit about how they did during the pandemic. Like we were open when a lot of places weren't. So how did they do? How did some of your small businesses survive? Uh, the big word, as you heard last year, the uh, uh, pivot. So basically doing that, I'm sure we'll talk about that more after the break and mm-hmm. everything. But I mean, um, we'll, we'll have some really good stories about some of the local businesses we'll share with you. Yeah. yeah, I would love to hear like just some of the creative things that they did. And maybe you could talk about a few of the businesses yeah. and some things that they did that were a little bit hot, inspiring and totally. different. So, all right, we're joined this morning by Pat Largo. He's with Local Shops One mm-hmm. and also does his little side gig of Comedians Uncorked. I got that right. You did. And past radio guy, so you're probably having a blast hanging out with us. What do you think about being here versus pre-recording in the Beasley studio last time? Live is always better. Yeah, it is. This is great, yeah. I think I mentioned that when we were in the studio last time. All right, this is Tampa Home Talk. We're going to have some fun, and I'm going to have Pat even have a joke queued up for you guys when we come back. How's that sound? I like it. 813-377-2775. 813-377-2775. Call or text if you need us. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome home. Welcome home. Leo came with Barrel Engineering and Inspection here, joined with Pat Largo from Local Shops and Katrina from Tampa Home Talk. This is Tampa Home Talk, and I'm your hostess with the Moses, and we Leo is my sidekick. Promised a joke? I know. Did you have enough time to conjure up one? Uh, I know, just, uh, you know, talking about all the bad drivers. We talked about this with the uh, snowbirds down here and all the bad driving and stuff like that. The bad drive. We all agree there's bad drivers out there, right? Because mm-hmm. we're in Lutz. And I, I drove in from Newport Richie, and boy, is my middle finger tired. <laughs> <laughs> that's, good. Uh, that's a good one. I mean, that was bad when you got ice down your digit after you've been driving. So, in other <laughs> words, 
get out of the left hand lane if you're driving 40 that's all i'm saying <laughs> If we have too many, we have too many guns down here for that. <laughs> yeah, that would be true. Very true statement. Very bad, man. But so, thanks. the local shops. Just really curious to know yeah. what some of these guys did during the pandemic, and like really creative ways some of these folks survived, and who they are, and what they did. Thank God, a, a lot of businesses, uh, uh, mainly in the uh, Pinellas area, St. Pete, um, uh, Gulfport, stuff like that, were were still open. And again, they 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 did the change, the pivot, whatever you want to call it, by doing things like um virtual selling so doing stuff online which was great they know how to do something we can't uh, if we can't bring people in let's do curbside service and sales so they were doing stuff like that like the restaurants did like the, the restaurants pivots. exactly yeah. exactly you still need um, to eat we'll feed you come pick it up yes and that goes into with the drinks they just i believe passed that bill now because remember for a limited time florida passed that bill for restaurants I don't know about bars, but restaurants, I think you have to serve food that you could um, let people buy 32 ounces or less of alcohol in a sealed container to take to go. Right. Now I believe that passed officially. So even though as things open up again, thank goodness, restaurants can still do that. So you can still take stuff home with you or pick it up like with food and stuff. So that's awesome. But that's what some of the people were doing. Some of my friends were making um, stuff they thought. The, the, their business wasn't clothing or masks, but they decided to design masks, and they were making a killing on that, which is amazing. I had one friend of mine, uh, my buddy's sister, who decided out of the blue to go on YouTube and learn how to make masks. Her business was so successful in four weeks, she had to almost double the price to slow production, wow. and people were still buying it. Wow. I mean, because she was a one-man army. She, she didn't have any, any help. It still takes, so, time. It takes I, time. I sewed some during the pandemic. It took me about 20 minutes. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a in, if you're quick. It's if you're quick. Minutes, yeah. And you're talking about hundreds and then going into yeah, a thousand. Yeah, I couldn't do that. So, I mean, it's good to see them them do that. Uh, and, and that's why we ask people to, to please, now is a good a time as any. If you, if you are thinking about supporting lo- local businesses more or you haven't done it much, please do it. And that goes into the whole mask thing, too. Like, you know, it, it goes under local and county law sometimes with, with these local businesses. And they're not asking you to wear masks to make you mad and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, to, we don't want to get see them get, get fined, yeah. you know, or closed down, God forbid. So just, I know everyone's on edge. So just, you know, just go in there, try to support the locals or online like we do with uh, buylocaltampabay.com, which was a, web, a whole uh, online store created by Esther Venuzio, who started Local Shop. So she did that right when the pandemic started. And if I can mention about that real quick, buylocaltampabay.com is a, a killer idea because unlike Amazon and Etsy and stuff like that, we don't take any cuts at all from what what the people um, sell, what the businesses sell. And it's there. a significant amount on Amazon. It is. It's, yeah. So, but I know I'm an author that sells books right? on Amazon. <laughs> good, good, and that's I'm glad you are. You, know, you should really even think about it because you could do it right here for free. There's no there's no uh, fee to get on it to do it. Okay. You, can, you could literally get on there and do it, start selling your books. And if you sell it for twenty bucks a pop, you get twenty bucks. She subsidizes Esther subsidizes all the costs to keep that website going. And right now, there's like over fifteen hundred uh, unique products on there with like hundreds of uh, of local businesses that aren't, are selling. Aren't they doing like an annual, um, like a vendor fair or anything like that? Or Shopapalooza? Oh, that's right. That's it's right. It's back. Yes, thank God. It was supposed to be. Uh, it's going to be our eleventh again. It's supposed to be our twelfth, but last year canceled that out. So Shopapalooza is arguably well, it's one of the biggest, but it might be the biggest um, festival shopping um, uh, uh, event annually in the country it's a two-day event it's going to be back again on november 27th and 28th at vinoy park in downtown so the scene is great uh, last uh, beautiful two, there two yes and the two years ago the weather was just fantastic and i kind of MC the entertainment stage and sometimes i take a break and when i'm on stage in between bands and you look out and vinoy park is huge and we cover the whole area and to see thousands of people just walking around and shot at every tent every vendor food people selling out yeah that's because great. it's just it was amazing to see that now how is it going to happen this year post covid or you know maybe as we wind down a little bit with covid we'll see but i think people are jonesing to get out again so yeah. uh, and it's free admission 
Uh, so it's just uh, it's a great way to support all the locals, and I know the local vendors and businesses they love it because well, it's they a good make a lot time of money. too because it's in November and there's a yes. lot of unique gifts there, and people are looking yep. for holiday gifts, and it's just a good it's good timing. It really is, and I know that we're going to have a I I, I don't want to give away too much a, a nice little Christmas thing which we've never done before. Nice. So Esther's like, you know what, we didn't do anything last year. We need some Christmas spirit this year. So I'm like, let's do it. So it's going to be uh, it's it's going to be a lot of. I fun. have some ideas for you, and I have some great people that I think would do well there we're gonna have to chat about that let's do but, that i mean that's what it's all about so tell me how did you get involved with shop local like what made you want to do this and like what's your involvement been in the last year during all this COVID stuff uh, i met esther like in 2008 literally off of craigslist okay. uh, i answered a, a, an ad we met at a coffee shop in saint pete downtown on main on uh, central and she told me her idea man she was in the newspaper business at the time and i was already out of radio so we're both from the media side of things. Mm -hmm. And the, the truncated version is she's like, I want to do this. And I go, sounds good. Uh, I didn't know much about it. I'm like, I could help you like if you want need any MC work or just I could help you in general. I mean, I'll just I like to be a part of it. It sounds fantastic. Right. And just to, I remember the very first one, the very first Shop of Palooza, which was downtown, like just, you know, small amount of vendors, but it was good. And then to watch it just year after year. Grow and grow. And not just, yes. and But people are like, they not only they know, when, when you get the mayor, and she's like, you know, besties with the mayor and St. Pete, and she's calling up council people. I'm like, Esther, you're just blowing up. Go, this girl. is crazy. So, you know, it's great to see. I love hearing good stories about good people and seeing good things happen. I like that karma and those positive vibes. And um, to see what she's done and to see the differences she's made in people's lives from the LGBT community in Gulfport to just g in general in Pinellas and, of course, Hillsborough and Pasco. But um, it's just great to see people jump on board. I've learned things about local stuff and businesses I never knew before. So like what? Just, I mean, just how much money, like, stays in, in town or a city. It's about 70 cents or so per dollar when you buy at a local shop compared to buying at a, a big um, a box store or yes. a chain store. So I never knew that. So now every time I go into a local place, like I live in Newport Ritchie, so when I do that and go to a local place in Newport Ritchie and buy a shirt or a pair of jeans or go to my local uh, brewery, I'm like, this is, I I'm helping out, man. And it just makes me feel good. I forget what the numbers are, but there was a uh, th there was a stat that came out from the National Association of Realtors that talked about for every one piece of real estate that is sold, the number of um, money that go the amount of money that goes back into the community mm -hmm. from people that have bought a home is significant. See that? Absolutely significant. That's great All to right. hear. So, do you have any events coming up other than your big one that Shopapalooza? We got about thirty seconds. Uh, next one is the uh, Gulfport Pride. Uh, Gulfport uh, uh, Pride celebrates and showcases the uh, LGBTQ uh, community, and it's all to fundraiser for the LGBTQ Resource Center for Gulfport. This is going to be uh, Saturday, May 29th Okay. Right along Beach Boulevard, the main drag right there in uh, Gulfport so you can go on their their Facebook page uh, for that Gulfport Pride that's the next big one coming up for their uh, in Pinellas County it's a great community if you want some information on that just call or text us at 813-377-2775 we'll be happy to get you connect with Pat get you all the information you need 813-377-2775 or if you're driving and you couldn't take down the website we'll be happy to send it 813-377-2775 stick around we'll be back right after this break thanks Pat Thank you. Welcome home, Leo Kane here, Barrel Engineering and Inspection, bringing in the, bringing Mr. in the Brian. techs, bringing in the the people doing the. the We're gonna stuffs. change gears to some home Completely stuff. Completely change gears into my arena, which is making your home maintenance full. And your your AC is running, and your vinyl siding shining, and all this other stuff to make your home more beautiful going into these summer months. So let's talk about AC because that's a hot button, right? For, for the we summertime. Even though we have a cold wave today. Well, you know that's temporary. Very, very, very. I temporary. haven't changed my AC filter in six months. <laughs> so Brian, is it pickle simmer? Pickle simmer. Pickle simmer. It was very close. Uh huh. With Bright Tech AC heating and cooling, Correct. right? So tell us a little bit about Bright Tech. Well, brytech has been in business since about 2000. Um, I have, I'm in two states, Indiana and Florida. Okay. Are you from Indiana and then transplanted to Florida? Is that what it went? Yeah, yeah. I spend time in both. Um, I spend seven months here. I have crews working in both states. Okay. Um, 
So what area do you service here in Tampa? In the whole Tampa Bay area. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all of Pasco, Pinellas, yeah, all, yeah, all? Yep. All, of, all of Pasco, Hernando, Pinellas. So let's talk Westbrook. about like our crazy summer heats, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, we was talking about the cool wave that just rolled in today. So what should people be doing to make sure that they are maintaining their AC so that they don't have to call you in the dead of summer and say, Brian, my air's not working. The number one issue we have is air filters. Air people not changing them. Yes. We tell our clients, when you pay your power bill every month, check your air filter. And that's that's the most cause of, of service Or calls. set a first of the month alarm, especially if you have right. pets. Right? <laughs> yes. How many of those dirty AC filters have you seen, Leo, in home inspections? Uh, like I said, I, I wasn't joking. I haven't changed mine in about six months. Really? Well, I live in a 100-year-old home, so the outside air is the inside air, so it's constantly recycling. <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe you just said that on the air. Shame on you. <laughs> Shame. Six months old? Yeah. And you have pets, right, besides your chickens? I, I, yeah, I have dogs. Yeah, that's not good. I'm coming to look at your If I come to your house, I'm looking at your AC. Hey, I have a home warranty. Saying. I don't have to take care of my AC. Oh, my gosh. No, it's not good. How <laughs> I many right. people say that? Uh, yeah. yeah. So let me ask lot. you a question because I this is like a regular thing that comes up where your AC stops, right, and it gets clogged with that sludgy stuff. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's just mold and mildew. Um, uh, there's two coils, one outdoor coil, one indoor coil. Um, on the outdoor coil... We help the homeowners out by telling them how to maintain it. You can just spray it off with a water hose, get grass off the coil, and so forth. The indoor coil is a little more different. Some of the bad coils, we have to take a chemical cleaner and actually clean that. And we also use, uh, we push UV lights in Florida mm. a lot for it kills all the uh, mold, bacteria, and so forth. So the HVAC maintenance is, is huge because the longer, like if people aren't changing these filters for 12 months and they have pets, <laughs> right. you know, you go to them and you pull these things out. You should be able to see through them and they're like clogged with all this gray dust, which is kind of gross, by the way, because that's like human skin cells. Yeah, that's why we recommend, you know, once a month, you know, check them. If they're, if they're okay, you know, go another month, but at least check them once a month. So I, d I say the first of the month, set yourself an alarm. That's a good way to do it when you pay your mortgage payment. Sure. They're probably more inclined to remember that right. or your rent payment as opposed to your uh, <laughs> your AC, right? Absolutely. I mean, your, your air con your mm -hmm. electric. I guess that's one way to do it. But so AC ducts, like you talk, we see all the time people talk about cleaning the AC ducts. Mm -hmm. Is that a real thing? On metal duct work, it is. It's hard to clean flexible duct. Um, our company doesn't have a duct cleaning machine. Um, that's kind of a specialty. Like how often would you but really need to do those? And I would imagine, do you even need to do it unless someone has like, they're running their AC with no well, your filter? Ducts, that all goes back to changing your filter. <laughs> Only way you're going to get dirt in your duct work if you don't change your filter. Or if you have no filter. Yeah, or if right? you, yes, if you, you have, have no, no filter. filter. Correct. Mm -hmm. Do you, what's your role in the inspection part of that, Leo? I mean, when we're doing a home inspection, we are checking to make sure that they have a filter in the right places, and we're also making sure that the filter is clean, because if they just got this one-year-old <laughs> filter that's got a layer of dust that's two inches thick, that's not... It's choking the machinery. We notice right away, and I tell my sellers, like, if they've done that, change your AC filter before the buyer comes and the home inspector sees that. Well, another thing change people it. don't realize is sometimes you have multiple places where you think you put an air filter. Like, you have the return in the side of the wall, and then you also have the area right underneath the air handler where you can put a second filter. If you put two filters in, that's as bad as just having a dirty filter. Am I right? Yeah, that's correct. And a lot of homes will have three or four uh, filters. Um, in so wait, are locations. you saying you don't need them? Because I do have three or four in my house. Yeah, well, it depends. It's in series. They can be parallel, which means you can have one in the side wall and then one in the bedroom. And those two are separate, doing two separate things. But if you have them in series, which is one in the side wall and then one right below the air handler unit, that's what's creating the... Well, my air handler's in the attic and all the things are in the ceiling. Just like that. So what does that mean? That means they're probably separate. So what does that mean? That means you'll have... Depends. You may have just one central return. If you have multiple, there'll be a filter grill there that we call where you take the cover off and you'll have a different 
size filter. So for we each should one. have a filter in all of those. Yes. Yes. It's where if you have okay. the ones all throughout the house, and then you have one directly below the air handler, that's where you shouldn't be double. Okay. So let's talk about how someone actually maintains their AC in Florida. Like, how do they flush out this line? And we've heard different things about putting vinegar, about putting bleach. Like, you know, we hear all different things. So what's what's the best way to maintain it? Oh, for condensate lines, drain lines? Yes. Yeah. Drain lines, you know, we we have a special tablet that we drop in the line and put in the drain pans um, that helps with the algae and, and so forth. Um, when it gets really bad, we have to take compressed air and actually blow the line out. Um, you can, there's not many places, some, some installs will have a, a vent T where you can pour bleach or something, you know, down into the into the line so do you think bleach is better or vinegar or would you rotate do you, you have definitely don't want to mix the two <laughs> no <laughs> right, i wasn't right. saying mix the two i was just right. saying rotate. I, either one i've never heard of vinegar but we just use a, a common bleach okay so from a mold assessment standpoint uh, vinegar with 10 minutes of contact time is going to disinfect any microbials that'll be there okay. uh, bleach is actually going to make them spore to try and save themselves so that's why we don't recommend using bleach if you're trying to get rid of like a mold well you have a mold specialty license so yeah <laughs> so how, what about does your company do like a maintenance plan because i know that's the one thing that people probably don't do i know we're guilty of not yeah we have we have several that. service contracts that we offer to customers you know um twice a year services to come out and you know clean and inspect clean inspect flush mm -hmm. the line yes. clean the coils all mm -hmm. that sort of stuff yeah. what does that run to do that that semi-annual maintenance right uh, normally it's uh 129.95 and do you have something, a special rate for our listeners? Uh, yes, actually, for your listeners now, we'll do a yearly for $89.95. All right. So that's once, still twice a year? Yep, twice a year. All right. So that's great. Is there a geographic region that's good in? Um, in the whole Tampa Bay area. Nice. Wow. So if you've not had your AC service then in a while and you're listening to this, that's a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. Just call or text AC to 813-377-2775 and we will get you connected with Brian for the 89.95 yeah. annual and you'll come out twice, right? Yep, yep. In that year. Mm -hmm. It will come out twice. 813-377-2775 and get your AC service. So what about when the AC like freezes up? What, what causes that? More than likely, that's a dirty air filter, or there's low in refrigerant. Those are only two causes. When it just gets frozen and doesn't move. Yeah, there, yeah, there's, yeah. We got a leak somewhere in refrigerant. Um, most of the time, it's a dirty air filter. How long are these units running these days? They don't make them like they used to. That's for sure. Life expectancy, twelve, fifteen years. Okay. Is that, are you, what are you seeing, Leo, when you go in and you see like a 30-year unit? <laughs> You're uh, like, don't change it, it'll break, the new one will break right away, right? Well, I mean, they actually made the units better back in the day. Yeah, They were sure. less energy efficient, they were larger, they lasted longer. It's Definitely just, lasted they're making longer. Them, they're, they're making them energy efficient, they're making them tighter, they're making them smaller. <laughs> We took this big York system out of our house. It was so old. It was like original to our house in the 90s, and it was probably 20-some years old. And I thought York was more of like a commercial system, but that was what was in our house. And we're like, yeah, we're going to be proactive and just change our AC because it's really old, and we know it's going to break, and it's going to be in the mm -hmm. dead of summer. And literally, I think we had more calls after the new AC than we did for the old one. So if it's, bro if it's not broke, don't fix it. Just save the money <laughs> for it. You Pretty win. much. I mean, I love those old train systems. That's, I've seen 20, 25-year-old train systems still. Oh, yeah. So let me, let me ask you about that. What's your top three carriers? Like it does, And I've heard train doesn't make them like they used to. You think that's accurate? I don't want to put on the spot because I... <laughs> like, well, if you were going to put an AC in your house, which one would you pick? How's that? Personally, what's your personal opinion? My personal opinion, I love Goodman brand. Okay. Well, that's, that's what I put in my house. I... I have least problems with Goodman. Okay. Well, there you go. It's, but we service and we sell all brands. But yeah. um, 
I like the Goodman brand personally. All right. Well, thank you, Brian, for giving us that information. And thanks for offering that special to our listeners. No, it's really no, good. Aiden, no. I'm going to take you up on that for sure yeah, in my no. own house. Uh, call or text AC to 813-377-2775. Again, 813-377-2775. We'll hook you up with the 8995 HVA service. Welcome home. Leo Kane here with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. We just talked about the inside of your home. Now let's talk about... That's a pretty good deal. Eighty nine ninety five for a two times in a year service. That's great. I just don't want someone I know personally coming to my house and telling me I don't change my air filters enough. Yeah, you probably need to do it, especially in a 100-year-old home. Yeah. Just saying. But uh, let's talk about the outside of the home. We've got Travis Gray here with PSI Clean. He was with us last year because they do the holiday lights. Too. I know, they Remember? do. Yeah. How's it going? How you been? Pretty good. How are you guys? Oh, we got to turn you up. Let's try that again. Go ahead. I'm doing great. How are you guys? Doing good. Doing good. Thanks for hanging with us. So, all right, let's talk about all the fun stuff that you guys clean. What, what are most of the things you're pressure washing these days? Is it like sidewalks and driveways or is there other so, stuff that's so more pressure predominant? pressure washing, yeah. It's, it's mostly flat work like concrete, like vinyl fences and everything, but mostly we soft wash. More. More so, Leo. I mean, you. So, is it dirt or is it mold? The, no, the, the pressure washing. I, no, like the dirty sidewalks and driveways and. That's dirt. That's not going to be mold. Sidewalk sidewalks, which get sun, they get they get good drainage. They're not really growing mold. Just curious because they're always so dirty. Like, yeah, they always dirty. look so great after they're pressure washed. Well, that's why you don't walk around in your house with your shoes on. We like. I cannot tell you the number of times that if it's like if and that's like I would say eight out of ten properties we list, we have them clean and pressure wash the driveway, and the entryway because that stuff shows up in the photos. Yeah. What kind of chemicals do you use in the pressure wash? So with pressure washing, we use mostly water, but we do have chemicals that we pre-treat and post-treat with. It's a sodium hypochlorite. Which so is bleach. It's like a, a chlorine bleach base. And then we add some soaps into it to make it stick and smell a whole lot better than bleach. So in your post, are you doing anything to seal it? We, we do have sealers that we use, but we only use it on like um, pavers, wood, or anything like that. What about for rust? I mean, like if I've got a rusty stump stucco that's rusting on the side of my building and you pressure wash it what's it going to do to that well we, we don't really pressure wash the rust we have chemicals that they eat the rust away and then it's not harmful for your paint it just pulls the rust off and then we'll rinse it off are you guys pressure washing like vinyl siding well with vinyl it's a little brittle depending on how old it is so mm -hmm. we don't pressure wash them we do a soft wash and then a scrub and then we rinse so what's the difference between a pressure wash and a soft wash so with pressure washing we're using about four to 5,000 PSI of water. And I mean, it can cut through wood, vinyl for sure. And then with soft washing, we use about 60 PSI and then we let chemicals do the work instead of letting the pressure of the water do the work. So when an HOA is telling me I need to get my roof pressure washed, they're really talking soft wash then. Yes, pressure washing on roofs is very bad for the roof because it blows a lot of the granules away. It deteriorates the roof really quick. It's like subjecting it to a tornado, basically. I mean, they're already talking about redoing their roofs in 10 years. I don't, I'm not a big advocate of cleaning anything on your roof, personally, but I know sometimes the HOAs require it. That's if I want my roof cleaned, I'll let nature rain. Get a dark color. That's what, like, the dark color sucks in terms of, like, the heat. And solar reflectivity. And the, sol yes, and the environment and everything else. But if you're in an HOA where they're going to complain... <laughs> Uh, get get a light, white roof, white colored roof. Yeah, I don't. What about know. service areas? What service areas do you cover? So we do all of the Bay Area. So we're based out of St. Pete. So we do Pinellas, Hillsboro, Pasco. Um, I've I've been to Sarasota a few so times. The greater Tampa Bay area, yeah. really. So most of the Bay Area. So is it true that like when you pressure wash the driveway, that it actually pulls up some of that concrete over time and wears it down? Is that accurate? It does, depending on how much pressure you're using. We use a surface cleaner. We can adjust the pressure. So we're not putting direct 4,000 PSI onto it. But I heard that pressure washing kills my plants, and that's why I haven't done it. Pressure washing won't kill your plants. The soft washing is what it hurts them, but we, we tarp all the plants. chlorine chemical yeah. bleach is what's killing the plants. All of our chemicals are, are what's harmful to the plants, but we do our best to help them, to like save them and everything. So we, we tarp them, we cover them, we rinse them. 
we do everything we need to do to save them. So this is why I shouldn't pressure wash myself because I might use the wrong equipment and I might kill all my house plants where you know what you're doing. 100% yes. How often should someone actually pressure wash? And then I guess a better question is how often do they actually do it? <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Katrina. So a lot of people, they've never had the roofs clean. They've never had their house washed. I mean, they do their driveways about every six months or every year, depending on the person. A lot of people don't look at their roofs. They don't notice they're dirty. Um, they don't care about their driveways, but there are the people out there who want to get it done religiously. Yeah, so what's a good time to clean it? Every six months? I would do every six months, yes. What about screens, window screens, screen enclosures, things of that? Do you Can you wash those? Yeah, those we, do. we do window that. cleanings as well. We do inside and out on the windows. I'm having it at my house because I noticed like this green stuff on my screen pool on the inside. Yeah, you're totally yep, Can we I do a lot of job plans. after here? Can I send you to my house? I don't think you can pressure wash your pool, though. We saw oh, no, my pool pressure wash. That's brand new. Oh my gosh, we're out of time. I had more questions for him. No, this was a lightning round of questions. That's why I was just bombarding with questions. I know. A lot of information to get out. All right, how long time. does it take you, and roughly how much does it cost, and do you have any specials for our listeners? So the cost depends on the square foot. We charge about 30 to $0.45, cent depending on how dirty it is, for um, soft washing. For flat work, it's between 10 and $0.18 cent per square foot. Okay, how big is the average driveway? I don't even know. 800 square feet about that yeah the two car driveways four cars they're, they're not that expensive they run about 120 bucks okay well we're already out of time so call or text we'll give you this special for pressure washing just check text psi to 813-377-2775 and we'll get you hooked up with the pressure or soft wash 813-377-2775 813-377-2775 love where you live or we'll fix it welcome home